In the last video, I was trying to make a point that there are ways to make old hardware work on modern operating systems. In my case, I took an old Canon MF3110 laser printer that 64-bit drivers never were released for, and I showed that the newer MF5700 was so similar that you could simply edit the INF file, use it for your MF3110 printer if you wanted to use it. In this case, we're using a printer, but you never know what this is going to work on because it might work on other devices such as webcams, scanners. It really just depends on if there's a newer model of a product that came out that's essentially not any different. I mean, of course, it might have a different design but we're we're talking about the core hardware being the same and if this is the case a little hack like this will work for you and it's very simple I'm going to show you very quickly how this is done. We're going to quickly download both the MF3110 and the MF5700 drivers directly from Canon's website. Once you have it downloaded, extract each into a separate folder. Now we'll go into the MF3110 and we've got two INF files, one for the scanner and one for the printer. We'll go ahead and open the one for the printer and you'll notice that there is, is a device name and this is very important where it says USB print backslash Canon MF3110 f 3110 fe 8 Okay, that's what you need to copy. And that's all you need to copy, nothing else. Now with that copied, we go ahead and open up our MF5700 folder and open up the appropriate INF file. Again, there's only two, one for the scanner and one for the printer. Within here, you'll see a comment that says 64-bit x64. Under that, you'll see canon.ntamd64. That's the processor architecture. And below, you'll have a list of printers, the MF5730, the MF5750, the MF5770. I'll just copy one line and paste it. The only thing you need to replace where the device name is. Here it's twice, so we'll insert it twice. You could also change the markings and quotations if you wanted to reflect appropriately in your device drivers. This is just a naming thing. Uh, I just leave it as is because it really doesn't bother me or it really matter to me. And with that, you save it. Now at this point, the driver is ready. The only issue is that Windows will likely not let you install the driver due to driver signature enforcement. What you need to do is look for the option to change advanced startup options. You'll see an option that says advanced startup. From there, you can click restart now, and then you'll see the option to troubleshoot, and then you'll see advanced options. From there, go ahead and click on startup settings, change Windows startup behavior, and it'll tell you restart to change Windows options such as enable low resolution video mode, debugging mode, boot logging, and most important to us, disable driver signature enforcement. You'll click restart, and now you'll have to wait for your computer to reboot, and you should get a screen that says press a number to choose the options below. In this case, you'll press the number seven, which is disable driver signature enforcement. And that's all you need to do. And with that, Windows will start and we can go ahead and install the driver as we normally would. Now you can go to your device manager in Windows 10. This can be done quickly by pressing Windows key and X and then clicking device manager. And there you'll find your printer. Right click, update driver software, browse my computer for driver software. Let me pick from a list of device drivers. And here you'll click on have disk and then you'll find the INF file that you just edited and you should be able to install it. You might get some warnings about driver signature enforcement. I just go ahead and tell it to install anyway. And with that, that, you should have a device that works. This will not always work for every device. There might be a change in the hardware that breaks it. So before this, make sure you have a backup, make sure you have a restore point, because if the driver doesn't install properly, there's always a chance that you'll basically break your system and you'll have to spend some time reverting. If it does work, it didn't take that much time, and now your old device is working on your new computer. If you do try this yourself with another device, feel free to leave information in the comments. Someone else that's looking for the same information. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and press like. If for any reason you dislike this video, please press dislike and feel free to criticize me in the comments. That's what this channel is about. You leave your feedback and we move towards building a better channel. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. I do want to talk to my regular viewers much, but not all of my content has, has very much been centered around technology jokes. Now I do plan to keep up the jokes. It's just trying to do them every single day and trying to come up with fresh ideas starts to become a bit monotonous. So I'm trying to keep things fresh. I'm trying to change things a bit. And my goal with this channel is to create a channel that eventually with time has a balance in all directions. So it's something that you can, you can come to learn a bit and you can come to laugh a bit. In the end, it's just another YouTube channel that you can come and enjoy. For all my viewers around the world, wherever you are, have a good night, have a good morning, have a good evening. Bye-bye.